Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to Auto Line Daily. I'm Sean McRoy filling in for John once again while he's out of town. But now let's look at what's happening in the global automotive industry. General Motors has received the brunt of criticism over its ignition switch defect, but the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is also under fire for not responding to the problem sooner. Safety advocates say part of the issue is the department that investigates defects is underfunded and understaffed. Bloomberg reports that NHTSA has requested a budget of $850 million for 2015, but only $10.6 million of that is earmarked for the Office of Defects Investigation. That office has 51 employees, which is down from 64 in 2002. Those 51 employees track the nation's nearly 250 million registered vehicles and review over 40,000 complaints NHTSA gets every year from consumers. While there's no direct link between GM's recall and underfunding at NHTSA, it may be one reason why the agency wasn't able to act sooner on this and other recalls. Toyota and Honda are gearing up to introduce fuel cell vehicles next year, but it's going to cost you. According to Japan's Nikkei newspaper, initial prices for the fuel cells will carry a price just under $100,000 in Japan. By next decade, Toyota hopes prices will drop to between $30,000 and $50,000. The report said the two companies plan to build 1,000 units a year and plan to sell them in the U.S., Japan, and Europe in 2015. It looks like Ram customers can't get enough of the Pentastar V6 offered in the 1500. The brand will now be offering the engine an 8-speed transmission combo and higher trim levels rather than just base and mid-level entries. It comes at a discounted price too. In Laramie trim, the V6 option will be over $1,600 cheaper than the 5.7 liter V8. And speaking of that Pentastar V6, the EPA just released its ratings for the engine in the new 2015 200 with all-wheel drive. It comes in at 18 miles per gallon in the city, 29 on the highway, and 22 MPGs combined, which is not too bad and slots in the middle of its competitors. No word yet on EPA numbers for the four-cylinder Tiger Shark engine, but Chrysler claims it will get up to 35 miles per gallon on the highway. Well, it looks like things aren't getting any better for Viper. Last week, we reported that production had been halted and that its day supply was through the roof. Now president and CEO of the SRT brand, Ralph Gilles says the car won't be making its return to the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Last year was the first time the Viper competed in the race since 2000, and let's just say that the two cars it fielded did not finish too well. And you can bet that will be one of the topics discussed when Ralph joins us for tomorrow night's Auto Line After Hours. So if you want to learn more about the company's performance brand or where Chrysler Design is headed, make sure you tune in Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at our website, Autoline.tv. Coming up next, a look at how technicians are keeping up with today's high-tech vehicles. There's so much to love about Bridgestone's Dueler tires. The amazing traction, the quiet, comfortable ride, and they're really tough. It's like loving three tires in one. On Autoline Garage, I've tried to provide real-world feedback for engineers with some of my own design pet peeves. But this week, I'd like to look at some of the kinds of tools it now takes to properly diagnose today's computer-driven cars. Autoline Garage is brought to you by Bridgestone. Your journey, our passion. There's a saying that you can tell how skilled a technician is just by looking at the tools in their toolbox. While true, the kinds of tools required these days are like the vehicles we drive, more sophisticated. So having the right tools for the job is crucial. Now I don't want you to be one of those folks that when a check engine light comes on, you say, oh, you can just hook up a scan tool underneath the dash and it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. Because let me tell you, that's flat out wrong. Here's a good example. What if a vehicle has a P0302 engine code, which is a cylinder number two misfire? Should it be interpreted as bad plugs and wires that need replacing? Now that may be right eight or nine times out of 10, 
But what if a fuel, electrical, or mechanical issue is triggering the engine light to come on? A scan tool is not going to be able to tell you that, nor will it be able to tell you that the plugs and wires are bad. But they're absolutely necessary to work on today's vehicles, and they will at least start you off in the right direction. And that right direction usually starts with more tried and true tools like a power probe or multimeter. But some of the more sophisticated tools I used to diagnose vehicles were an engine analyzer, which is an instrument that gathers and displays engine data and electrical waveforms by connecting to various engine components via things like a high or low current amp probe, vacuum transducer, or multiple kinds of leads. And like today's vehicle technology, it's smaller, faster, and more powerful than ever before, which would allow me to diagnose everything from that cylinder two misfire to a slow spinning fuel pump that causes a hesitation on acceleration, but won't trigger a check engine light. One other piece of new technology that I've seen come up in only the last few years is called a microamp current probe. It's used for things like module, communication wiring current, or active wheel speed sensors, and its operating range can go as low as 100 microamps. And just to give you an idea, a microamp is one millionth of an amp. And as you may have guessed, these tools don't come cheap. I would guess we had about $50,000 wrapped up in scan tools and diagnostic equipment. And some of those necessary scan tools require $1,000 per year in software upgrades just to keep them up to date. Not to mention the hours of training needed to learn how to use these tools. So the next time you see a $100 per hour diagnostic labor rate, it may not be too surprising as why. And if you've got a technician that has tools like these and has taken the time to learn how to use them, stick with them, because they're one of the good ones. But that's a wrap for today's Autoline Garage and this show. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.